Hello and welcome to another training video for Enlight POS powered by Dark. In this video we're going to be taking a look at some of the controls in the invoice detailing section where you're going to be creating all of your invoices and tickets. This is kind of the heart of the application. This is where a lot of employees spend most of their time. So we're going to spend some time with it. We're going to take it slow. We're going to do this over the course of a few videos. Just a reminder, this may not look the way that it does in your application when you start off. That's okay. Just note the customizations or the changes that you need done as I'm talking about them and send them to the support team so that they can take care of it. So without further ado, let's jump right in. To get to the detail invoice section, we're going to go through customer walk-in, look up our customer, and then we're going to use this new invoice button. This is what the screen looks like by default. Yours may not look this way, that's okay. Normally, once you've gotten to this step, we've already configured your price list, so your buttons, your layout may look a little bit different. But let's go over the layout very quickly. So the main thing to understand with this layout is that it's organized into categories and then items inside each category. So for example, if I select pants, the system then shows me all the pants that I have configured in that category. I can select a specific pants. So for example, it started with pants by default because that's the first item in the category. If I select capri pants, it changes to capri pants and it automatically adjusts the pricing. Once you understand that this is organized by category and then items underneath each category, the rest of it doesn't really matter. All these buttons can be changed, they can be customized, the images can be changed, the labels can be changed. If you don't use colors, like for example, if you don't detail the colors, the, the patterns or the materials, we can remove these buttons and just leave the ones that you do use just to clean it up a little bit and have less clutter for your employees. So let's talk about adding items. I'm gonna get rid of that one item that we just added and the first thing we're gonna look at is this pants. So I'm gonna select pants, it's gonna add the item and then it's gonna give me the D service tag because this is for dry cleaning. So if I was gonna detail this out completely, I could do, okay, so these are the pants. I could say that these pants are blue, maybe they're more of an indigo they're plain and they're cotton and as I'm adding as I'm clicking on these buttons you can see that the details are being added all of those will be printed on the ticket and the invoices um, at the time that the that we hit the print button which we'll talk about in a little bit I can also add up charges to any of these items so if I wanted to have an upcharge for blue we could configure it and you know whenever it's blue or white which is more common I could add 50 cents or a dollar whatever whatever it is that your store uses also, I can have additional upcharges. So for example, if I come down here and click the upcharge button, I have one upcharge configured for this item, which is special care. So when I click on it, it adds special care to the detail, and then it also added a $1.50 upcharge. And you see that it's adding it here at the bottom as well. If I wanted to add a second pair of pants, and these would just be for press only, I could come back to pants, which we'll is take the default selection, and then down here, I'm gonna push the press only button. So first, I want you to notice that it says $4 is the price of the pants and they're for dry cleaning. So here's our D for dry cleaning. So we're gonna make these press only. I'm just gonna hit the press only button. Now you'll notice that it changed to a P for press only and the price has been adjusted to 350 because this is our press only price. There are other ways to work with upcharges and we're gonna look at those on a separate video. If you manage a lot of upcharges or designers, we have some, some customers that manage up to 4,000 designers. Going through this upcharge button isn't the fastest way. So there's a different way to deal with that and you can see that on another video specifically dealing with upcharges. Let's take a look at what else we can do from this screen. So let's look at repairs. I'm gonna stick with our little example here for pants. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clean this up a bit so that we don't have as much in the way. I'm going to select pants. It's showing me again for dry cleaning. Note the service tag. Here's our pricing. If I wanted to make a repair on these pants, I could come down here, hit the repair button with the pants selected. It's going to ask me if I want to include cleaning or press only. I'm going to say yes just to be thorough. We're going to include cleaning. And then it's the system is going to give me the tailoring options that are configured for that category. So I'm going to say that we're going to do, we're going to fix this pants zipper. When I click on that, it adds a separate item with a T for tailoring. It says pants zipper and then the price for that. And then down here, this one also changed. It's dry cleaning, but now it also has a T to remind us that this is going to be tailored and dry clean. So we've looked at press only, we've looked at dry cleaning. I just added in some tailoring. We can also come in here and do laundry items. So for example, this laundry shirt, if I select it, it's going to appear as laundry shirt and it's got 
these little orange letters here. This is our starch level. So right now NS stands for no starch. This starch level comes from the customer profile. By default, the system is always gonna take the starch level that's set in the customer profile. If I need to manage it for an individual item, so say for example, for this item, we, we don't want no starch, we want a different starch level. I can come down here to the starch button and then I can select heavy starch. And you'll see that the initials changed to HS now. Now we're doing with heavy starch. Of course, you can detail any of the items that I select the same way that we had done originally with the pants. I can see that this shirt is green, plain, and cotton. And all of these items will get added in there. And then the same way, if I have upcharges, I can come back to the upcharge button and press that. So now we've seen the different service types that we've got configured in this store. Again, yours might be a little bit different. Normally, you've already set up your price list at this point, so your screen is going to look a little bit different, but it's going to work the same way. Next, we're going to clean this up a little bit, just get rid of all of that, and we're going to add a manual item. So a manual item would be something that is not a part of your price list, but a customer has brought it in, you've agreed to clean it, so you've got to deal with it, you've got to enter it into the system somehow. So to add a manual item, we're going to come down here and push the manual item button. We're going to select first what service this item will be. We're going to say that this is for laundry. We're going to say that this is a parachute. We'll leave the piece count the same, just one piece. We're only receiving one. I can add an upcharge if I wanted to. We're going to say that this is $35. And then here you can manage the taxes and the environmental taxes. So if, if I think that uh, taxes should apply to this item, I just select them. We hit OK. And everything gets added in. So here's our parachute. It's got its starch level because we're, going, we're doing this for laundry, our $35 that we specified. And the system is applying the environmental taxes and the taxes that we had selected when we were adding the item. In this basic overview, I want to go over a couple more things. First, I know that you've noticed these buttons up here that count from 1 all the way through 9 and then 0. These are your quantity buttons. So if I want to enter 20 shirts, I just click on those buttons and then I enter my laundry shirt. So here's our 20 shirts. The system automatically does all the math for us and adds the final price. Also, I wanted to go over damages. So if I come down here and let's say that I'm adding this sweater. So we're going to use the regular sweater and let's say that as we're, we're detailing this we notice that maybe it's got some damage or a spot or something. So we can come down here to the spot damage button. This little modal opens up and it's got the different damage types that I have configured in the system. These are completely configurable so we can adjust them to whatever damage types you're used to dealing with. Let's say that we found a little bit of ink on this sweater. I hit ink, it's adding it back here. You can see that it's added it to the list. And then also, if I had a webcam configured, I could press take a picture. That's gonna enable the webcam. And I can take a picture of the damage and store it with a ticket. Later on, you can email that to the customer and show them, dear Mr. Customer, we found this damage on your item. How do you wanna proceed? You can take up to three photos per item. And of course, this also works if you're using a tablet, it'll just enable the camera on the tablet and you can take a picture. If you do go, with the webcam, please, please try to get something like uh, that's at least 1080p, which is pretty standard these days. So it shouldn't be very expensive, but try to get something that's at least 1080p because some of the damage could be small, it could be a small stain. You wanna make sure that the camera's resolution is high enough so that you can capture the damage and it's actually visible when you send the picture to the customer. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is first we're gonna clean this up. We're gonna add an item, we're gonna add this skirt. And then let's say for whatever reason this is a redo or a no charge, you can come over here and it, it doesn't really matter which one of these you pick. These are just for different business processes. If I do redo or no charge or no clean, what's going to happen is after I apply it, it's going to add the detail to the line item and it's going to zero out my prices because this is something that we're not charging for. So all three are going to have the same effect. It's just going to add a different detail and that could reference a different process in your store, maybe how the item is handled. Next, I want to discuss a little bit about the different pricing types that are configured into the system. So for example, all the ones that we've been looking at so far have been regular pricing. That means that the system is just retrieving whatever price is associated with that item in the back office. So if I select shirt, it's automatically showing me 325 for the shirt. That's what I've got configured in my back office as a price for my shirt. There are a couple of different pricing options. So for example, if I wanted to do laundry by the pound. 
I could come down here to more items and again the placement doesn't really matter more items just gives you another column of extra items if you need it but the placement doesn't really matter because um, we we configure this for your store but I select wash and fold and then when I hit the wash and fold button it's gonna ask me how many units am I washing it could be pounds kilos it doesn't really matter it could be pleats it could be panels whatever you're using that is per unit pricing will apply this model. So let's say that I'm washing 30 pounds. I'm gonna hit okay. And then it's going to add it around here to the legend. It's gonna say 30 units at 225 per unit and then do the math for the amount that the customer owes me. So that's an example of multiple pricing. We have one other kind of pricing configured into the system and this is manual pricing. This is for items that need to be assessed visually. Maybe you have to take a look at them and then come to a price. So if I come down here again, we'll go to more items and I select leather and then I'm going to do leather jacket. It's going to ask me because this is manual pricing. It's going to ask me what I want to charge. You can specify a base price. So it, that's why it's showing me the 46 because this is the price that was configured in the back office. But it's always going to ask me how much I want to charge. Maybe I look at this jacket and maybe this is very fancy. So I want to charge $120 for it. And that's the price that the system will use. Finally, and let's get this cleaned up before we proceed. I'm just going to delete the items that I've added. Let's add one more item to this order. Let's add this dress. We'll say it's a plain dress. And then we're, let's say that we've detailed all the items that belong to this order and we're ready to print it out. Before we print it out, I do want to specify a due date and I can do that up here. So let's say I don't want this due on the 10th. I want it due on the 11th because it's going to take a little while longer. And I can specify a time, we'll say, 5 p.m. This default due date we set for you. So if you're normally doing two day turnaround times, one day, three day, whatever it is, we set the default due date for you. Over here, it's going to always display the default due date for your store. You have the option of changing it based on the items that you've seen here. Okay, so now we're going to print out this ticket. And the fastest way to do so is just by hitting this big green print button over here. That's going to save the item, create the ticket, and create the invoice for it. Let's say, for example, that I have another shirt. And then we'll add a tailoring item. So let's say that I'm going to repair. And this time we're not going to include cleaning. We're just going to say we're just going to tailor this jacket. It's not going to be clean. There's our tailoring item. So by default, our system is going to split this order into three invoices. It's going to split it by service type. That's the default setting of the system. So it'll split the tailoring into a dash one. It'll split the laundry into dash two. And it'll split the dry cleaning into dash three. So by default, the system is always going to split the orders by service type. If that's not something that you want, it's something that we can disable. You just let us know and the support team will change that setting for you. So when I'm ready to print, I can hit this big green print button that's gonna print out my customer receipt, my invoices, my tags. If I print tags, that's gonna come out as well. Or I can specify what I need printed. If, if maybe I'm just detailing this, the customer isn't here and all I need are the invoices or maybe all I need are the tags or something like that. I can pick from this menu the different print options that we have available just so that you get the documents that you need back and not everything that normally print. Again, the default is gonna be the customer receipt or the ticket, which has all these items on just one piece of paper. That is the entire order. And then internally, it's going to print out the different invoices that are split by service type, the dash one with maybe the tailoring, the dash two with the laundry and the dash three with the dry cleaning. Those are internal documents so that you can send them off to each of your service departments. Um, if you don't need that option, it's something that we can disable. And of course, the amount of copies that get printed out of each type of document is something that we can configure for you. Maybe as you're watching this, just jot down how many copies of each you need and we'll make the adjustments for you. Just contact your support team and they'll make the adjustment for you. So I'm just going to hit this green button and then over here, you see that ticket 89 was created for our customer. All of the documents would now be getting printed out. The, the invoices, the tags, the ticket, all of that would be coming out of your printer right this second. And we're going to be looking at those documents specifically in another video. So please keep watching this series here on the, on the detail invoicing screen because it does have a lot of options, a lot of customizations. It's kind of 
a big part of the system and it does a lot of things so we've we've got to split it up into several different videos but hopefully you've learned something here watching this one um, we hope to see you again soon from everyone here at dark thank you for your time and thank you for your business see you on the next one